Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, allow me at the outset to align myself to all those who expressed regrets for the decision of Mr. Kofi Annan's to resign from his mission. Actually, the first statement ever that was issued with regard expressing regrets for Mr. Annan's decision was emanated from the Ministry for Foreign Affairs in Damascus. My government expressed, officially speaking, just a couple hours after the decision was taken by Mr. Kofi Annan, expressed the Syrian government's regrets. And the Syrian government precised that the main reasons for which Mr. Kofi Annan took his decision are mainly related to the non-cooperation by those parties who have influence over the armed groups in Syria, namely speaking Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and some of the co-sponsors of the draft resolution which was adopted, which has been adopted a few minutes ago by the General Assembly. Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Turkey plus France and United States cannot patronize the future of the Syrian people. The future of the Syrian people is and will be decided by the people of Syria themselves. Number two, the political system ruling over Saudi Arabia and Qatar are not, as we all know, an exemplary paragon of democracy and strengthening of human rights. We were expecting the ambassador of Saudi Arabia to come up to the General Assembly with a draft resolution aiming at liberating the remaining Saudi territories occupied by Israel since 1967, mainly speaking the islands of Sanafir and Tehran in the Red Sea. We were expecting the Saudi ambassador to come up to you to declare publicly that the Saudi armed forces will withdraw from Bahrain and will stop their violence against the Saudi people themselves in the, in the eastern area of the kingdom, namely Al-Qatif and Al-Awamiyah. So what happened today is a flagrant and blatant hypocrisy by those who co-sponsored the draft resolutions. Ladies and gentlemen, the legitimate claims, the legitimate popular claims of the Syrian people are now being moved to stage three or four on the level of priorities of those who pretend they want to help the Syrian people. The foreign interference in our domestic affairs, the smuggling of weapons, including Stinger missiles, has helped only to push these legitimate popular claims of reforming the country at the beginning from priority number one to, be, to become priority number five or six. This foreign interference has transformed the priorities into an armed rebellion against the government and the state. And I wonder whether the ambassador of Saudi Arabia 
and the ambassador of Qatar and the European and American ambassadors would allow only 1% of armed rebellion to happen in their own respective countries, then let them come to me and to my government and start criticizing us. We are not defending any single drop of blood that is taking place in Syria. All this blood is a Syrian blood. And we regret, strongly regret, these bloodsheds. But let me elaborate a little bit on this by telling you that, number one, 50% of the losses in a human life are military. Number two, the armed groups invade civilian areas, civilian neighborhoods, and start using these civilians as a human shield. They start even killing some civilians and provocate the reaction from the military. So all these bloodsheds are very well pre-calculated by those who are sponsoring terrorism in Syria, namely speaking, the Qatari and the Saudi and the Turkish intelligence and governments. You have seen today another pitiful example of how the PGA has violated his role when he took side with regard to the draft resolution before voting on it. This is once again a clear-cut example of the repetitive violation by the PGA of his tasks and his mandate entrusted to him by all member states. So today has witnessed again another piece of theater elaborated by the PGA himself, the petrodollars and the intelligence in order to tarnish the image of my government and show the Syrian government as an irresponsible government killing its own people. I'm in your hands. Who's sending the Stinger missiles across the border into your country, number one? And number two, since the Kofi Annan uh, initiative, that whole thing evaporates on the 19th of August, what do you expect now? I mean, how do you... The mission of Kofi Annan will be decided by the members of the Security Council on the 19th. We cannot anticipate on how the Security Council would deal with uh, the resignation of Mr. Kofi Annan, but by all means, somebody else would replace him. Of course. So the, the Syrian government is still supportive of the mission of Mr. Kofi Annan, the Six Points Plan. What about the Stinger missiles and sending them across your border? It's up to the Security Council to deal with this issue. The, the Stinger mi missiles crossed the Syrian border from Turkey. Mr. President, you may have changed. This, this draft resolution began under, as drafted by the Saudis, calling for Bashar al-Assad to step down, calling for countries to join the sanctions of the Arab League, and then this was removed. Uh, what, it what wasn't. It wasn't removed because it is still. There is a still a reference to these uh, uh, um, rejected ideas in the last preliminary paragraph of the uh, draft resolution. Do you think? I mean, I guess my question is. I heard that, that even some proponents of the resolution, UK, France, Egypt, they believe that if, if these other references were left in, it would have gotten as few as 70 votes. What do you? I mean, what do you make of the change? You, I understand you're arguing that it still says that, but obviously 12 agreed. So the draft resolution is full of controversy and contradictory remarks. Let me tell you, for instance, that, let me give you one example. The draft resolution speaks about or calls on member states and the General Assembly to follow the Arab sanctions imposed against Syria, while at the same time Saudi Arabia votes in favor of another draft resolution which is voted annually speaking in the General Assembly condemning 
imposing sanctions, unilateral sanctions on member states. So this is in itself uh, a very explanatory note on, on the hypocrisy of the Saudi uh, behavior. Mr. Ambassador, you, you made a statement uh, in your uh, remarks to the General Assembly concerning the threats that you say have been made against uh, yourself, other diplomats, uh, and, and actually your family members. Would you be able to uh, share a little bit more details with us, uh, perhaps sources of those threats or where we may be able to? You said they were conveyed in the media. Is there any particular uh, I reconfirm what I said in my statement that I have received myself, members of my family, other diplomats, uh, other Syrian diplomats, direct threats. We are guests in this country and our protection is up to the American authorities. So I leave it up to the American authorities to investigate the sources of these threats. They are aware of, of what I am saying. Thank you. It seems like uh, even Ben Ki-moon wants to keep some presence in Syria after August 19th. So the question has arisen, even if the council somehow doesn't extend UNSMIS, whether, there's, whether Syria would be open to the idea of whether it's DSS, some form of UN presence continuing. Is it, would that this, be these draft resolutions, uh, the, 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 the main objective and goal of this draft resolution is to kill the mission of Kofi Annan. You, you may remember that the Saudi foreign minister said publicly in Cairo a couple of days after the, Mr. Kofi Annan started his mission that the only solution to the Syrian crisis is, to buy, is by supplying weapons to the armed groups. The Emir of Qatar, three days after the adoption of Resolution 2043, 20, which endorsed the, the Kofi Annan's plan, the Emir of Qatar said in Rome that he would give 3% of chance of success to Mr. Kofi Annan's mission. So it is not secret anymore that these two countries have been working around the clock from the beginning to topple the mission of Mr. Kofi Annan. And you may also remember that every time the Security Council or the General Assembly were meeting to discuss the issue of Syria, a bloodshed should take place somewhere in Syria in order to justify further pressure on Syria, on, on the Syrian government in this very important international stance. Some people have mentioned the name Marty I don't know if you have a response. Is Syria going to have any input? It looks like the, sec the Secretary General and the Secretary General of the Arab League decide together. Do you feel that you have any, is the name going to be put on you or do you think it will be run by you? And what do you think of the drug? Sorry, what is that? Syria does not react. Uh, uh, to uh, the assignment of another head of uh, the observer's uh, mission in Syria uh, based on personal uh, assessment. The issue for us is how to guarantee the in positive involvement of those parties in Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Turkey, USA, France, Britain and Germany over the armed groups in order to engage in the peaceful settlement as stated in Mr. Kofi Annan's plan, so we are sticking to the necessity of uh, seeing the mission of Mr. Kofi Annan succeeding without any foreign interference in our domestic affairs. We need a serious and a positive, credible assistance to the Syrian people as well as to the Syrian government in order to fulfill the uh, six points plan. That could not happen if the same uh, countries and powers uh, engage, negatively speaking, with regard to the implementation of Mr. Kofi Annan's six uh, points plan. Uh, New York Times, The Washington Post, The Telegraph, El Pais, Der Spiegel, whatever, the Turkish newspapers, all of them acknowledged that the governments of these, uh, of these countries I have uh, enumerated are directly involved in smuggling weapons to the armed groups in Syria, then uh, you cannot be a fireman and an arsonist at the same time. We need firemen to help us stopping the violence in the country. And we cannot do that uh, by uh, receiving uh, stingers, missiles, and other uh, weapons 
sophisticated communication system and weapons through Turkey uh, uh, destined to the armed groups. Thank you very much. One kind of technical question, if you don't mind. Uh, the, the, the UN journal linked to a version of the, of the Saudi resolution that included sanctions and Mr. Assad to step, step down overnight, and they tried to fix it in the morning. What, what's your understanding of that? Do you think it had any impact? Did you communicate to the UN? What did they say to you? This draft resolution, as I said, will have no impact whatsoever. This is a piece of theater concocted by the Saudis and the Qataris who are taking great advantage of their position as PGA. Uh, uh, in order to pass over their own national agenda over the international agenda. So this draft has no impact whatsoever. Uh, on the contrary, it will help the Syrian government increase its serious efforts in order to uh, uh, bring about uh, a peaceful settlement to the Syrian domestic crisis, which is not anymore a domestic, as you know. It has an international dimension and a regional dimension and an, a very negative uh, uh, Arab uh, uh, dimension. Where is Nizar?